Welcome adventurers. Today uh, I challenged myself to a one day build. I turned uh, a lot of this stuff into that. I think it's like a plasma reactor looking thing or generator. So the thing I'm holding there is a variable frequency drive that failed. Uh, I used them at work. Cooling fan for it. It's trash. They don't even make them anymore and nobody uses them because they're outdated. That's a toy gun I got at a Goodwill. I don't actually end up using any of it in this build, but it's got some neat shapes and designs to it, so I probably will eventually. Those are uh, inserts for pipette tip uh, containers. This is the disposed end of a Chinese-made um, autoclave. It doesn't; it's not compatible with our outlets here, so I uh, got that from work as well when we upgraded uh, the outlet end. And it has this weird little insert for making it waterproof. And I kind of disassemble that because the little silicone bit I can't really use, but the plastic bit, yes. So yeah, look at that, and it kind of looks like a gecko's eye socket or something. It's weird, and unfortunately, I can't use it. Those are inserts to adult beverage bottles, those are little plastic inserts that. I think they came out of like a floating inner tube with cup holders. I don't know why they were in there because you can't put anything in them with those in it. So that was weird. But there you go. So I start fiddling around with stuff and just kind of seeing what looks good where and how and how I want to set it up. And yeah, it's, it's pretty much just trial and error, snapping together spray bottle parts and little plastic tubing sets. It's uh, it's ever so exciting. I probably spent an hour messing around with that stuff. Then I finally figured it out. I'm gonna make some sort of power reactor looking thing. Now I want light, which will come at the end. But to make light go all the way through, I've gotta cut a hole out. So I'll use the handy dandy Dremel. After I mark out kind of where I want the tower to be on there, I cut out a hole. And then I wanna even out the top which that's ultimately what this is going to be is the top of the base structure. So it's a medium density chipboard. I cut it to fit. As you can tell, my craft table is a little wobbly at times. Uh, sorry about that. Hopefully you don't get motion sickness. But yeah, I cut and notch it to fit and I just complete that over the whole top and uh, go on the tower. And that's kind of what it looks like. Not much now, but it's getting there. Yeah, pretty exciting stuff. So, now I want to add some more detail. The thing on the left is something from Mini Blinds I found randomly in a box, even though I don't remember having Mini Blinds anytime. Now, this thing doesn't have a lot of surface area to attach to, and I wanted you to be able to see the fan, so I kind of destroyed the little cooling fans so that I could push them close to the grate. And I do that awkwardly, as you can see, cutting off the excess wire and putting them in place and then using a piece of the chipboard as a backing material, I super glue them in. Let's see, right there I can push them right up against the grate and you can actually see them in the finished build. Oddly enough, they still spin too. I guess I could have left power to them and allowed them to spin, but meh, that's more complicated and unnecessary than I need. So here's a super glue and a piece of chipboard as a backing, kind of hold them all together. Then of course I super glue the chipboard into the frame. Here I custom trim a piece of chipboard for the base because I want it to be an enclosed box. I don't want you to be able to look through and see like the terrain underneath or something. And I just super glue it right to the side. I know, it's not complicated. Um, but the end result is worth it, I think. So here is some spray bottle parts that I'm super gluing to the side. Kind of like a ventilation duct or power bead. I don't know. It's a thing. It's a thing on the other thing. Because that's all we do in this hobby is we glue one thing to another thing. And then, then that thing becomes uh, a more complicated looking thing. And then there's all kinds of things like that. See? More things. Now I wanted kind of a walkway. 
So I measure off what I thought would look good. I think it was about 14 centimeters. Yes, I used metric and the handy dandy compass. So I figured out the smaller diameter of the actual adapter thing. And then I made it about two inches wide. I know, Imperial, I'm just all over the place. I scissor cut the outside, I exacto knife cut the inside, and Bob's your uncle, walking platform. I then take some, it's a sculptor's armature wire mesh, super glue that down, trim it to fit the curvature, and then using some EVA foam, I cut out some curved pieces, haphazardly, not really, but it was awkward getting a good angle at first. And I super glue those down to the actual ridge and then wrap the edges in it as well. It gives it a nice finished, like bulky metal kind of rough look, which I enjoyed. And there you go, super glued in place. Now I'm going to tediously make a ladder out of shish kebab skewers and super glue. And while I'm doing that, I'd like to remind you to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy my videos. I know some of you do. I've got over 2,000 viewers now, so that's a, that's a pretty good testament. If you'd really like to help out more, of course, there's always the option of, well, Patreon. And of course, uh, the link is in the episode description. Uh, I have some wonderful patrons that make suggestions, and I'm going to actually start trying to make videos that they suggest. One of them was magnetic, um, or yeah, magnetic signs that you can kind of swap out for symbols of your various clans or whatever you're playing with. Now here, I'm filling in some gaps with some pieces of wooden dowel, just because I want to make sure it looks finished, not some random gaps. I'm also covering up holes I don't want light to seep through with just some chipboard and some super glue. Nothing too exciting there. Here, I've had these two weird gaps at the corner from the way it was molded, but I figured some tubing, as I had here as well, would fill in those gaps nicely, and it actually does. It looks really good. And, uh, now I'm going to add rivets, 10 billion little rivets, which are just uh, hexagonal glitter pieces, a dab of uh, finely tacky glue with a toothpick, and then the exacto knife to pick up the little gems and pop them in place. Here I cut off some pieces of square wooden dowel, cut them at 45 degree angles, cut them all the same length, about two and a half inches, glue them in place, and then primed this kind of flat gray. I don't use a lot of ostentation co uh, ostentatious colors usually when I'm painting, but this one, I wanted it to stand out. This, I feel, is more like a set piece. So the pipes and the column in the middle are this, this kind of deep red, which looks great, especially after two coats. Uh, anything I wanted to be like metallic or metal, uh, I painted flat black. I put on hazard stripes in a few areas using the old tried and true tape and dabbing method to make them look worn and, and battered. Here, in my very up so close view, I use some gunmetal to paint the fan blades. That was tedious and time consuming. Here's some weapon bronze, also from Army Painter, like the gunmetal. I'm going to be painting some bronze sections because I noticed in a lot of Warhammer stuff, everything's like bronze and gold. It's crazy. We must have a surplus of expensive metals in the future. Black wash, the whole darn thing. You know, like so. Now I'm going to do a little wet dry brushing. I'm trying a new technique where you have your dry brush slightly damp. And uh, it makes it le look less dry and more just worn edges. So kind of a lighter version of the same red, a gray, and a random one of my hairs because I have long hair. And uh, dry brushing some metal, some gun metal onto everything. And then some uh, greedy gold from Army Painter on top of the uh, bronze to kind of bring out the edges. Now I'm creating what's like a light box or a light chamber. Take some shiny sided aluminum foil, hot glue it into place so it reflects light. I roll up a tube of it and stick it inside this whole column, which is hard to see, but it's there. And then as a light diffuser, wax paper. Uh, I like to cook and wax paper is used a lot in various things, you know, for food storage and prep. So hot glue and wax paper as a light diffusing. Actually, there's two layers in there. Well, all said and done. 
Now some foam core to go in as a bottom for the box. And if it's so snuggly, I use a piece of blue painter's tape to make a handle. And now this $3 light I got like a year and a half ago from Walmart, I believe. Waterproof, various colors, various light settings. It's pretty neat. Hot glue it in place, snap it on there, and bada bing, it actually holds and pops out so I can change the batteries when I need to. Also, the thing's waterproof, so that's pretty cool. Now, to thank my patrons. Of course, there's HM Girl Potpourri, Ryer Tonic, Ian Clark, and Jesper Karkoff. And my legendary patron, LAJ. Without their help, a lot of this wouldn't be happening. So there it is, the finished product. I know, I said lights. Why aren't there any lights? It's weird. Wait, there they are. I mean, it's so cool. I, I played with light uh, in the room when I was photographing and everything. I changed the light colors for various of the pictures. This is red. If you've got a color-coded team or something, it allows you to set up a checkpoint. There's even a strobing effect, so if you're using this for a tabletop role-playing game, you could uh, increase or decrease the strobe speed that uh, would allow you to show, nope, things are getting worse. You need to get a move on. But there it is. The light shines through. It's super bright. Uh, the last few pictures I take, I didn't even have the lights on in the room where I was taking the photographs, just so you can see how bright it actually is. It's, I'm really proud of this one. My lovely adventures, I really truly am. Um, my next video, I don't know how I'm going to top it, but I'm going to do my best. I mean, look how bright those lights are. It is so cool, and it shines out right through the top. It's very obvious. Well, I hope you've enjoyed what you've watched. Now go have an adventure in crafting.